Dear all, welcome to this video. Please hit the subscribe button so that you automatically get updates for upcoming videos and lectures. Thank you. Enjoy watching. So microscope can be defined as an optical instrument consisting of lens or combination of lenses for making enlarged or magnified images of minute objects. So the basic reason behind using microscope is enlargement of small objects. The microscope can be classified into two types. One is the simple microscope where we use single lens and the other is the compound microscope where we use two lenses. We, depending upon the eyepiece, it can be divided into monoocular and binocular microscope. Monoocular, it means single eyepiece and binocular, it includes two eyepieces. Now, depending upon the source for illumination, the microscope can be classified into two, that is light microscope and electron microscope. In light microscope, optical lenses are used, whereas in electron microscope, electromagnetic lenses are used. In light microscope, visible light is used as an illumination source and in electron microscope, electron beam is used as an illumination source. Now the different types of light microscope include bright field microscope, dark field microscope and phase contrast microscope. Whereas the different types of electron microscope include SEM that is scanning electron microscope and TEM that is transmission electron microscope. We will be studying each of these microscopes in detail. But before going to that, we will first see the different components or parts of compound microscope. So basically the components can be divided into three systems. First is the support system, second is the illumination system and third is the magnification system. The support system usually includes base, stage and body tube. So this is the base of the microscope, this is the stage of the microscope and this is the body tube of the microscope which forms the support system. Next is the illumination system which includes light source or mirror, iris, diaphragm and a condenser. So here is your light source, here is your mirror and below that, below the stage there is a condenser and diaphragm both. And next is your magnification system which includes two sets of lenses that is objective lens and eyepiece. So this is your objective lens and this is your eyepiece. So here you can see the illumination system which is usually composed of mirror. Here is the light source. This is your condenser and below this condenser there is a diaphragm through which you can adjust the intensity of light. Now this is the stage of the microscope. Now there, here are the two knobs which are used for adjustment of the stage. So these two knobs are called as stage adjustment knob. By moving this you can move the stage either from right to left or forward or backward. Now here is the coarse adjustment knob. This knob will adjust the height of the stage from the objective lens and there is a fine adjustment knob over here which is used for adjustment of the image, blurred image. So here you can see that clearly this is your fine adjustment knob and this is your coarse adjustment knob. Now these are the objective lenses they are usually available in the power of 5x, 10x, 40x and 100x. Now this is the ray diagram of a compound microscope. So this is your light source. So light will be emitted. It will pass through the condenser and through the condenser it will be focused on the specimen that is the uh, tissue or the microbe which is to be observed. Then after this the image will be transferred from the objective lens to the ocular lens that is your eyepiece and from the eyepiece into the lens of your So our first type that is the phase contrast microscope. So this was discovered by Fritz Zernig. The principle of working of this phase contrast microscope is 
the phase of light rays is altered when they pass through a specimen to be observed under the light microscope this change of phase is manifestation of the depth and density of the cell and its internal parts since there is very little difference or contrast in the refractive indices or density of the specimen its internal structures and the medium it is not made visible by the bright field microscopy in phase contrast microscopy the small phase differences are intensified and translated into differences in light intensity with the help of special optical devices so this is the ray diagram of the phase contrast microscopy the annular aperture in the diaphragm placed in the focal plane of the substage condenser controls the illumination of the object the aperture is imaged by the condenser and the objective at the real focal plane of the object in this plane a phase shifting disk or a phase plate is placed the undiffracted light rays are transmitted through the object and pass through the altering ring on the phase plate at this point they acquire a one quarter wavelength advance over the diffracted light rays by the object while the diffracted rays pass through the transparent region of the phase plate and are unchanged by the missing phase ring they are already retarded by one quarter wavelength due to the object finally all rays including the undiffracted rays and the diffracted rays are brought together by an ipis lens apparent brightness or darkness in an image is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the light waves the image will be four times brighter or darker as seen in the bright field microscope hence it is possible to visualize the microorganisms without staining so the applications usually include that this microscope can be used to observe unstained living microorganisms then it is used to study the structural and the structural changes in larger microorganisms and tissue cells and it is used to study the examine or to examine the growth and cell division in bacteria flagellar movements spore and capsule formation and cytopathic effect of viruses in tissue culture our next microscope is the dark field microscope the microscope which forms a bright image against dark background is called as the dark field microscope the co the principle of the dark field microscope is the cone of light normally illuminating an object does not enter the objective but light scattered or reflected by the specimen is seen by the objective if a dark field stop of suitable size is selected all the directed rays from the condenser can be made to pass outside the objective an object within this beam of light will reflect some light into the objective and be visible there are three requisites for adapting an ordinary microscope for dark background illumination first is the dark background condenser which focuses only oblique rays of light on the specimen a suitable high intensity lamp and a funnel stop which reduces the numerical aperture of the objective to less than 1 the abies condenser paraboloid condenser and the cardioid condenser are commonly used for dark field illumination the abies condenser is more commonly employed than the other condensers because it is suitable for objects that do not require highest magnification to make them visible it may be employed either by inserting a dark field stop below the condenser or substituting the top part of the condenser by dark field element the paraboloid condenser is designed to be used with oil immersion objectives and an intense source of light the specimen or object must be mounted in liquid or in cement and protected with a cover slip the numerical aperture of the objective 
must not be greater than that of the condenser. The cardioid condenser is best employed with strong arc lamp. Ordinary glass lights and cover slits are not used because of high concentration of light. It is better to employ fused quartz object slides and fused quartz cover slips. The cardioid condenser is especially designed for examination of colloidal solutions and suspensions. Now what are the applications of dark pin microscopy? This microscope is usually used for examination of unstained microorganisms which are suspended in fluid. It is also used for detection of treponema palladium in early diagnosis of syphilis which is a sexually transmitted disease. Our next microscope is the electron microscope. It utilizes the short wavelength of electrons as a source of illumination for observing objects at greater magnification. This microscope was developed by scientists called as Max Noll and Ernst Ruska in 1931. The working principle is same as that of light microscope with only exception that the electron beam is used as a source of illumination instead of light and optical instead of optical condensers electromagnetic lenses are used now under this electron microscope they can be classified into transmission electron microscope and scanning electron microscope so first we will move on to transmission electron microscope in transmission electron microscope a beam of electrons is projected from an electron gun and is passed through a series of electromagnetic lenses. They get scattered and are transmitted through the object and pass through the objective lens which magnifies the image of the object. The projection lens further magnifies the image and projects it on the fluorescent screen or photographic film. The electron image is converted into visible form by projecting on a fluorescence screen. So this is the ray diagram for TEM. An electron beam has low penetration power through solid matter. Hence, very thin sections of specimen can be examined under an electron microscope. The degree of scattering of electrons by specimen is related to the number and mass of the atoms that lie in the electron path. Since most of the constituent elements in biological matter are of low mass and the contrast of these materials is weak, the contrast of such materials can be enhanced by staining with salts of heavy metals such as uranium or tungsten. These metals may be fixed on the specimen, positive staining or used to increase the opacity of the surrounding area that is negative stain. Shadow casting, ultra thin sectioning, freeze etching, localization of cell constituents and enzymes and autoradiography are important techniques used with the help of electron microscopy for observation of biological specimen and its parts. Our next method is SEM, which is also called as the scanning electron microscopy. It was built by Van Erden in 1938. Now the principle behind working of SEM is that the specimen is subjected to a narrow electron beam which rapidly moves over the surface of the specimen. This causes release of secondary electrons from the specimen surface. The intensity of these secondary electrons depends on the shape and the chemical composition of the irradiated object. The secondary electrons are collected by detector which generates an electronic signal. These signals are then scanned in a manner of television system to produce an image on a cathode ray tube. Scanning electron microscopy gives three-dimensional view of an object. The surface topography of the specimen or object can be revealed with clarity and depth. In pharmaceutical field, scanning electron microscopy is very useful in studies associated with surface characteristics of drug particles 
and morphological studies of antibiotic producing microorganisms and their spores. So now we will move on to the terminologies which are related to microscopy. First is magnification. So the degree of enlargement is called magnification or magnifying power. By how many times a particular image has been magnified is determined by this term magnification. So the total magnification can be calculated by multiplying the power of ocular lens with the objective lens. So, so, for, so say for example 5x is the ocular lens and 10x is the objective lens. So the total magnification observed will be 5x into 10x that is 50x. That is the image will appear 50 times larger as compared to the original size of the specimen. Next is your working distance. Now this is the distance between the front lens of the objective and the object on the slide. And this, the working distance can be changed by adjustment, by coarse adjustment knob, which helps to adjust the height of the objective lens with that of the stage. Next is your resolving power. So the ability to distinctly separate two small elements in the structure of an object that are a short distance apart is known as the resolving power. In layman language, we usually define it or call it as resolution. And this value of resolving power is determined by a term called as limit of resolution, which is denoted by D. So D is equal to lambda upon 2Na, where lambda is the wavelength of the light, which is used as an illumination source, and Na is the numerical aperture. Now, what is this numerical aperture? Numerical aperture is the diameter of the lens to its focal length and it can be determined by Na is equal to n sine theta where n is the refractive index of the medium between the object and the objective. Thank you.